Hello everyone, it's the Book Cougars, two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read. I'm Emily. And I'm Chris. And we're here with our big books, um, Friday Reads. This is uh, my big book for Sue's Big Book Summer Reading Challenge, Ulysses. I'm about 25% in and I've been taking, a, well, I haven't had much reading time the last couple days and I did take a break from it because I think it's interesting, but I'm kind of vacillating between thinking it's interesting and a colossal waste of time. <laughs> so that's how I'm feeling about Ulysses. I am reading Devil in the Grove as my big book, and um, I have intentions of also listening to the audiobook. I gave a listen, you know, like the sample, and I love the narrator, but I've just been engrossed in the book so far. I It's much denser, the writing, than I thought, so I'm just about 65 pages in, but really enjoying it. It is rich with history, so I'm stopping quite often and looking things up. Nice. So, so you got some yeah. tabby action going on Yes, too, right I now. do, indeed. Nice. Well, the other thing I started reading today is because I am not going to be reading Ulysses today. I wanted to read a book for fun. So this is Even Though I Knew the End by C.L. Polk. And this is a book, I think I mentioned it as something as an upcoming read. One, This is a, a copy from the publisher. Thank you very much. Who is the publisher? Oh, Tor.com, of course. Yes. Um, so thank you to Tor.com for sending this. But I, I don't know what happened. School must have just gotten away, mm. you know. Um, but I was looking for something fun and queer and thrilling to read. And this is what jumped off my stack this morning. And I'm a couple chapters in and really enjoying it. It's also set in Chicago. So. Pride Month. Woohoo! Pride Month. Good way oh, to start. Here I have a, I even, oh, this is silly of me to do well. I oh, even yeah. put my pride thing on my my watch, so right on. Good <laughs> reminder. Ooh, is that thunder? It's Sounds thunder. Like, We're expecting yeah. thunderstorms today wow. until like one a.m. Oh, thoughts from the oak by Audrey Colasanti, and this is published by the Black Spring Press Group. This mm -hmm. came to me via Allison, who is the gentleman caller's sister. And also one of our longest standing patrons through Patreon. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. And yeah. this is a book of poetry written by Audrey, who's the mother of two boys who are now, I believe, young adults. But um, the, her poetry collection is about how they both had were born with pretty serious health illness or health issues, I guess is the better way to say it. And... Um, her poetry is kind of taking us on a walk through the experience of mothering mm. when you have children that have s special needs you need to attend to. And I think one of them has epilepsy. Let's, let's see if it, the other one says, it doesn't say. So I'll report on the next episode. I'm really looking forward to reading it. On the back, um, one of the blurbs says you're gonna open this and just read it from cover to cover. And I'm in the mood cool. for something like yeah. that. Yeah, nice. which makes me think she's telling a story, you know, from beginning to end through her poetry about her experience of motherhood. Nice, cool. Yeah. That's what I like. I mean, that's one of the things I'm struggling with Ulysses. You know, it's experimental literature. And I'm the kind of, I've never really liked experimental literature, like Gertrude Stein is not my cup of tea. I'm the kind of reader who, you know, I'm like, tell me a story right? kind of reader. And let me get so, lost in it. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So not to be continually trashing Ulysses. <laughs> I'm really happy to know, like, uh, to have a sense of it. So. Yeah. Um, the other thing, I, this is just a little show and tell. Um, why Karen Carpenter still matters or matters there's no still in it um and this is by karen tongson this is a book that colleen our listener from chicago um read and really recommended a couple mm -hmm. gosh a couple of months ago now it's a really thin book and it is uh kind of interesting because the woman who wrote it is a woman of color i believe she's queer and so she's talking about Karen Carpenter's legacy and mm. how she touches different communities, I think, is what I'm getting from the gist of it. And this is, a, you know, again, it's another short one, so I'm hoping to maybe read it this weekend as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
So my last book that I'll be spending some time with this weekend is called Yogurt and Whey. <laughs> it's a cookbook by Homa Dashtaki, and it's recipes from an Iranian immigrant life. I learned about this um, cookbook at Cherry Bomb Jubilee when I was down in New York, but she create is the creator of white mustache yogurt wow which i don't know if you remember chris um they're sold at in new york and la only hmm. and come in these beautiful little jars I, I have a little show and tell of a picture of what they look like um and i used to go to the grand central station market and run like i would <laughs> i missed a train maybe doing this because i had to take them home with me they're these beautiful little glass jars that I think it's about eight ounces and with wonderful flavors on the bottom and it's thick Iranian plain yogurt on the top. Hmm. Super delicious. And so this cookbook, the front matter is a story about oh her. Yeah, look, look at, at the end papers. Beautiful. Yeah. And the front matter is about her life as an Iranian immigrant, her family, her history of going to visit there. And then she also talks about something that I'm having growing interest in, which is about food waste and that the product, one of the products, end products, I guess, or after products of making your own yogurt is whey. And it's the liquid that is left after you strain the yogurt. And the, so and I love her play on words here, a, po a political way forward, <laughs> play on words. But what she talks about is that um, the the let me just read what it says here that the yogurt industry that part of the problem with the yogurt industry, particularly Greek yogurt, which a lot of us are fans of, which is extra thick, is that there's they don't have anything to do with this whey product that's left over and they get mm. rid of it. And some of them are even dumping it in our water supply. Mm. And then the bacteria affects the oxygen in the water, which kills the fish. And it's wow. a problem. Wow. And food waste in general in our country and in the world is a problem. So she, as, a, as an organization, is looking to handle that by creating things with whey. So the cookbook has a lot of recipes made with whey. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm you, not sure I said that very succinctly, but you know. Sounded good to yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's a beautiful cookbook. It doesn't have many pictures. It has like hand-drawn pictures. And then in the very center are, is, is just like three or four really beautiful pictures of the food, so kind of nice yeah. like you, yogurt i mean i never really knew what whey was you know mm -hmm. the nursery rhyme you're eating her curds and whey yes. right um yeah. it's kind of a wonderful cover for yogurt isn't it i love that it. it is so... i think it was brave too mm -hmm. because so many cookbooks it's all about you know what's that picture on the cover yeah. how's it going to draw all the people? colors and everything yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool. i also have a little sob story which is mm -hmm. i had my copy for so long it was due back at the library and I couldn't renew it because someone had it on hold I was up in West Hartford I drove all the way to the Farmington library to pick it up and I think this is really cute on their receipts it says cost of buying these items forty dollars cost of using the library priceless yes <laughs> amen <Indeed>. yeah <laughs> oh that's fabulous I yeah. love that Yogurt. I re I didn't read it. I heard an interesting thing, uh, a part of an interview, uh, that a lot of the stuff that's sold as yogurt in the United States isn't really technically yogurt. Mm. And I'm, I think it had something to do with the the bacteria, the live. Oh, like the probiotics. Thing. Yeah, and things. Yeah. yeah so. Well, some of it is kind of like glorified dessert. You know, Pudding. so maybe, yeah, maybe that's what <laughs> yeah. they're talking about. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, interesting. So I'm hoping to make my own yogurt. I have to find some raw mm. milk, which I think our local health food store has. And yes, yeah, and they do have it. Yeah, yeah. So, it's go, a hot so commodity. hopefully I'll be able to report back. And maybe next week on Friday, Chris and I will be eating some homemade yogurt. Yeah, well, we'll <laughs> see because the cheese didn't last very long. No. <laughs> <laughs> Emily made cheese from one of the other cookbooks. She never got a taste. I didn't She's get it. She's a little bitter, yeah. maybe. No, I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> it's, it's totally all good. It was fun to see how you made it, you know, yeah. and the steps of it. So yeah. check our social media because Emily posted photos of the cheese making process, which is really neat to see. Hanging from my faucet and yes. cheese cloth. Yes. Yeah. 
Let us know what you're reading in the comments down below. We want to know, and we hope you get some good reading time this weekend. Absolutely. Happy, Happy reading! reading.